Okay, so while we're setting up, our, our next speaker is uh, Dr. David Bennett from the Rush Alzheimer's Disease Center. The, um, let me just uh, make a few comments. Dr. Bennett is the director of the Rush Alzheimer's Disease Center and the Robert C. Borwell Professor of Neurological Sciences. He is internationally known for his research. He currently leads projects designed to identify novel therapeutics for common neurologic diseases. He also directs the Regional Alzheimer's Disease Assistance Center for Northern Illinois. He serves on numerous national and international advisory and editorial boards, and he is principal investigator on several studies funded by the National Institute on Aging, including the Rush Alzheimer's Disease Research Center, the Religious Orders Study, the Rush Memory and Aging Project, and the Pathology Alzheimer's and Related Dementia Study in Sao Paulo, Brazil. Uh, Dr. Bennett, we welcome you and we look forward to your presentation. All right, well, thank you uh, for the invitation. It's uh, lovely to be back in um, Durham. I was supposed to give a talk here uh, a month ago um, and it ended up being on Zoom. So I'm actually happy to be physically uh, here. The weather is terrific. There's a snowstorm in Chicago. Um, <laughs> of my wife and the dogs, you know, enjoy the snow. Um, so I'm gonna talk about um, some findings across race in far, five harmonized longitudinal community-based studies in the United States. Um, and then this uh, one cross-sectional study in Brazil. Uh, I wanna thank my colleagues at the Rush Alzheimer's Disease Center. Uh, several of us also work um, at IAMSB in Sao Paulo. And then um, a few other folks, including uh, Mike Lutz from Duke, uh, who um, will be represented in some of the work I'm gonna show today. And I wanna thank the study participants um, in the five cohorts in the US and our study in Brazil, the National Institutes on, of Health. Um, and we have no relevant, we have no, I have no relevant disclosures. So the five harmonized studies in the US are the Religious Order Study, the Rush Memory and Aging Project, the Minority Aging Research Study. We have an African-American core of our Rush Alzheimer's Disease Research Center and a Latino core of the Rush Alzheimer's Disease Center. So the first two studies um, are mostly white, but they include um, African-Americans and Latinos and people are tested both in English and Spanish. The second two cohorts are exclusively African-American and the last one is um, exclusively Latino also testing in English and Spanish. Together, we've enrolled over 5,200 older people from across the United States. The Religious Order Study is a national study uh, from California to New York, from central Minnesota to Louisiana and Texas. Um, the other four cohorts are all in uh, Cook and the Collar counties in Northeastern Illinois. The average age of enrollment is 77, about three quarters are female just over a quarter are African-American and almost 10% are Latinx with a few others. Uh, this is the uh, study design of all of these cohorts. Uh, we document risk factors at baseline um, and then everyone is tested. There's a full evaluation every year. In my two cohorts, everyone is an organ donor um, and in the other three, organ donations optional. And I'm going to talk um, almost exclusively about the prospective analytic cohort results, almost nothing from the pathology. Uh, this is, gives you a sense of what cognitive aging looks like in older blacks and whites. Uh, the, the green are the whites, uh, the blue are the blacks. We see um, the data are shown by five year uh, increments. And uh, what we see is that the blacks uh, tend to be lower. Uh, this is semantic memory and perceptual speed um, across the entire age group, but they're also declining slower and there's an age interaction. So at higher ages, the difference in the rate of decline 
uh, becomes uh, quite pronounced. Um, the other study is um, the uh, Pardos. Uh, we've enrolled more than 3,600 older persons at IAMSB um, and three autopsy services, uh, Santo Andre, Garugos, and Osasco. Um, and then we also had previously enrolled from the University of Sao Paulo um, autopsy service. Um, we haven't really enrolled 3,600 people. Um, we actually enroll these people dead. Um, so that's why we're at autopsy services in a hospital. Um, so um, in, um, in 1939, uh, Brazil passed a law that everybody who dies must have a cause of death on their death certificate. Um, and um, many people in Brazil uh, do not have a physician to provide a death certificate with cause of death, in which case a autopsy is mandatory. Um, and so we have staff at these various SVOs where we, um, we approach uh, family members who come in to identify bodies that are there for the autopsy. The autopsy is a cause of death autopsy. Um, and then we ask them for their brains. So we're primarily doing this in order to get brains from diverse people uh, that are very difficult to get in the US. Um, so we have an age of death of 76, about half are female, 10% are blacks, 21% are mixed. And then there's almost uh, there's about two and a half percent Asian. So in Brazil, mixed is a actual racial category. Uh, so they can be self-declared black, self-declared white, or self-declared mixed. Uh, for analyses, since in the US, most blacks and mixed are uh, considered uh, African-American. So we're gonna combine those in any analyses I show. So, and then we'll just walk through some um, genetic variables, medical factors, experiential factors, and psychological factors associated with AD, ADRD traits where we can look at issues um, across race and in some cases, ethnicity. So this is a study that we actually did with uh, Mike Lutz and, um, and Alan Roses a number of years ago, where we looked at both the E4 and Tom 40 regions. And what we see here is, um, is that in whites, nearly, um, nearly none of the E4 carriers, and I'm, I'm sorry, None of the non-E4 carriers and all of the E4 carriers have, have five, uh, two, three long lung. And so the, the hazard for Alzheimer's disease is basically superimposed due to linkage, linkage, linkage disequilibrium for the 4-4, the 3-4, and the no APOEs. So the solid line is APOE and the dotted line is the Tom 40. But we see something quite different uh, in the African Americans. Here are the associated, first of all, in blacks, nearly, um, despite the whites, the non E4 carriers, um, um, but less than half of the E4 carriers have the 523 long. Further, the hazards are much lower. So, this is what we see for APOE4. All right, remember these hazards are much lower than whites. Um, and here's what we see for the uh, 523 long, long. Five, two, three, long, nine, long, and then the no, long. So, um, so there's something going on in E4, uh, Tom 40, that is quite different in African Americans compared to non-Latino whites. And there seems to be a separate effect from the Tom 40 from the E4. So now we'll walk through some medical factors that are associated with ADRD. First. Um, I want to mention that um, if you're looking at data from, um, from, from medical records, uh, there's more true positive whites that are found in the claims data. This is comparing data diagnosis of dementia from claims versus a diagnosis from our annual clinical evaluation. And dementia is disproportionately recognized by the health system in whites. Here's some associations of diabetes with uh, with the papers on risk of Alzheimer's disease and cognitive decline, but I'm gonna show you the main effects here, uh, the cross-sectional effect of diabetes for a global measure of cognition, episodic memory, semantic memory, and uh, visual spatial ability. 
and I missed one for working memory. Um, and when we look in blacks, what we see is that the diabetes is about twice as common in blacks compared to whites. Um, it's associated with semantic memory uh, cross-sectionally in both blacks and whites, and there's no race interaction. Here we're looking at change in body mass index over time. Uh, so this is regardless of what your starting body mass level is. If you're losing body mass index and you're old, uh, it's almost always not on purpose and it's also not good. So um, here is the 10th, the 50th and the 90th percentile of change in body mass index. Uh, this is mostly whites. And here we're looking in African-Americans um, and we see this interaction as well. So this is high body mass index with little change in BMI, low body mass index, little change in BMI. And the, the dotted lines are high body mass index, high change and low body mass index, low change. And this is change in BMI with risk of Alzheimer's disease. Here is CMV infection and risk of Alzheimer's disease in older black and whites. And what we see is that CMV seropositivity is much more common in Blacks, uh, but the association of CMV with risk of Alzheimer's disease is similar in Blacks and Whites. So one way that you get a disparity is that the level of the risk factor itself is much higher even without any interaction effect. And we see um, for diverse motor performances, both uh, gait function, hand strength, hand dexterity, uh, associated with risk of mild cognitive impairment, and there is no interaction, again, by race. The one paper I'm gonna show you with pathology, even though that's what I usually talk about, um, and that's the association of Lewy bodies with some clinical characteristics in blacks and whites. And the first thing is we find that the frequency distribution of Lewy bodies, and here are Lewy bodies in the nigra, you can see them in the hippocampus, you can see them in the neocortex. Um, we're similar in blacks and whites, the relation to dementia and olfactory function, we're the same, um, but its association with Lewy bodies with Parkinsonism was actually stronger in blacks than in whites. So now we'll talk about some experiential factors. Uh, these are factors that, um, that basically you can decide in the morning that you wanna get these experiences. Um, well, some of these experiences occurred some mornings many years ago when you were little. So your window of opportunity has uh, changed, but um, nonetheless. So we're looking at more cognitive um, and early midlife resources. This is in Latinx. And what we see is uh, the Latinx participants that are born in the US have access to many more uh, resources, both at age 12 and age 40 uh, of note. Um, while a substantial number of the Latinx in the Chicago area are from, um, from Mexico, actually we have quite a nice representation of Central America and uh, even South America. And then this is the association uh, with cognitive activity to cognitive function. Uh, where we see um, for both uh, the level effect and change in cognitive function for whites and blacks, there's no interaction. And again, there's no interaction. So this is uh, white and blacks among Latinx. We also looked at acculturation of our Latinx community, um, acculturation um, and uh, contextual factors and familialism and so um, we see cross-sectional effects of both acculturation and contextual factors across multiple cognitive domains, nothing for familialism, and there was no effect on change in cognition. All right, life space is a measure where we ask people um, how far they get out from, from basically the room in which they are sleeping. And so they may get out of town, they may, get, um, they may get out of their neighborhood, they may get out of their house. Um, and so we end up with six uh, categories of life space. Um, and not surprisingly, for those with a constricted 
uh, life space, a life space of zero versus three, for example, is associated with a higher risk of mortality. Um, and here we see um, no interaction by race either. We also have some measures of behavioral economics where we ask questions around financial and health literacy. And we find that low literacy is associated with a higher risk of, uh, of Alzheimer's dementia um, compared to high literacy. And we see this effect for both uh, health literacy and financial literacy. Another form of literacy is uh, foreign language instruction and musical instruction. Uh, these are both associated with a lower risk of mild cognitive impairment. And we did a study in the Brazilians and we looked at verbal literacy, numeracy and music literacy. Verbal and numeracy was actually lower in the blacks and the effect of literacy on dementia was similar by race. We also have a study on decision-making uh, where we ask people about financial and health uh, decision-making. We actually have them make decisions. Um, and here we see that uh, uh, impaired decision-making is associated with change in cognitive function. In this case, the change in cognitive function before decision-making suggesting that lower decision-making and aging is a, is a consequence in part of loss of cognition. And we see that in, um, in the no cognitive impairment group also. So even subtle decline in cognition can impair financial and health decision-making. And here we looked at literacy uh, as a mediation between racial differences in financial and health decision-making in older adults. And so we have a main effect of race on decision-making, and then some of it is mediated uh, by literacy. And you can just see the models here where that's significant. Um, now, as part of our literacy and decision-making, we also ask questions about susceptibility to scams. In this case, we, um, we're showing data from susceptibility to scams for Blacks and whites. Um, here we see that the association, well, first, uh, susceptibility to scam response items are different by Blacks and whites. So Blacks are less susceptible to scams. They had more knowledge of scam targeting and were less likely to pick up the phone for unidentified callers. Um, and so in this case, um, Blacks seem to be less susceptible. Um, and here's the, some of the individual questions that they um, endorse differently, actually lower. Scam awareness is related to incident Alzheimer's dementia and incident mild cognitive impairment. And here we're looking at correlates of susceptibility to scams in uh, older African-Americans. And so here we see association with semantic memory, working memory. Uh, we also have some psychological factors, psychological well-being, neuroticism, uh, financial and health literacy, and financial and health uh, decision-making. And that introduces some of the psychological factors that we're gonna look at. So the first one is chronic psychological distress. This is uh, neuroticism from the, uh, the big five of the NEO. Uh, this is not how much stress is on you, but how you respond to stress. Um, some people love stress. They get real energized by it. Other people just kind of wig out. Um, and so um, this uh, Psychological distress or proneness to psychological distress is associated with the risk of Alzheimer's disease. Here we're looking at neuroticism and negative life events um, in white and black Brazilians. So first the informants of blacks reported more negative life events. Um, in this case, uh, serious problems with the children, um, child out of marriage, alcohol abuse of a spouse or first degree relatives, they had similar levels of neuroticism. And then we see very different effects for blacks and whites in terms of neuroticism mediating the effect of negative life events on dementia. So in blacks, negative life events 
has a direct but no indirect effect on dementia through neuroticism. While in whites, we see actually quite the opposite. About a third of the effect of negative life events on dementia is associated with neuroticism with no direct effect. Loneliness is, uh, is, is a sense of uh, perceived social isolation. It's a measure of, um, um, like some examples here, experience a general sense of emptiness. I miss having people around. I feel like I don't have enough friends. Um, this sense of loneliness is associated with risk of Alzheimer's disease. And here we looked at loneliness and um, uh, social networks and depression in our Brazilian samples. Blacks had larger social networks, but loneliness did not differ by race, and there were no race interactions. So here were the associations of social and emotional isolation to odds of dementia, and then we actually lose the effect of loneliness when we control for depression. We have questions on perceived discrimination um, in our African-American cohorts. Um, where we ask people about how they've been treated. Um, and we have higher levels of perceived discrimination related to poor cognitive test performance, particularly episodic memory and perceptual speed. And it, it, these associations were attenuated after adjustment for depressive symptoms. Uh, we have similar questions in both the black and white Brazilians. We have blacks reported a greater levels of um, being treated with less respect than other people and acting as though they were not smart. Um, and then we see uh, that uh, was associated with cognitive performance um, and did not differ uh, by race. And purpose in life is a, um, it's a psychological tendency to derive meaning from life experience, possess a sense of intentionality and goal directedness that comes from the positive psychology literature. Um, it's associated, more purpose in life is associated with a lower risk of mortality, disability, dementia, and here I'm showing mild cognitive impairment. And we also looked at this in our sample of Brazilians, and here's the association of purpose in life with the likelihood of dementia and with mild cognitive impairment, and uh, was similar for blacks and whites, and there was no interaction by race. Two more. Um, we also look at neuropsychiatric symptoms in the Brazilians. Um, and as expected, they, people with dementia and cognitive impairment have higher levels of agitation, apathy, behavioral problems, and psychosis. And here, there again, there were no racial differences. And the last one is since uh, these people are coming in for a autopsy, we're able to use the results of the autopsy for cause of death. So it's very different than looking at claims data in the US. Uh, this is actual cause of death by a pathologist uh, after looking at the internal organs. And we have dementias associated with higher odds of death from infectious diseases and pneumonia, um, pulmonary embolus, um, dementia associated with the lower odds of death of cancer, circulatory diseases, myocardial infarctions, and arterial disease. And here there were no differences uh, by race. So in summary, we've got some genetic variants, APOE, TOM40 may have different frequencies and associations in blacks and whites. Dementia is better captured for whites than blacks in claims data. Diabetes, CMV is more common in blacks, but association with dementia is the same. Associations of many experiential and psychological factors are the same. Um, and the extent to which they differ by race is not clear. Um, and we are really in the early stages of understanding ADRD, its risk factors and racial and ethnic minorities. Um, and as usual, more and larger studies are needed. Um, all of these data are available to be shared. Um, you can go to the RADC Research Resource Sharing Hub um, and you can put a request in for the data. The data use agreements are there. And you can download them, or we can get them renewed. Um, data is an inexhaustible resource, so any reputable scientist uh, will be approved, um, and, um, and you're welcome to, to use them.
I can take one more minute, um, looking at, at racial differences is, turns out to be very hard um, for a number of reasons. One is like in our cohorts, for example, um, they started at different times. So the religious order study started data collection in 94, the memory aging project in 97, the other cohorts came online um, some many years later. Um, and so the amount of actual follow-up is quite different. The sample sizes are quite different. The ages are quite different. So it's not simply taking the data from the blacks and the whites and just looking at comparisons or you'll end up with a result um, of uninformative nulls and blacks, all right? Mostly driven by age and power. Um, in Brazil, we get closer to a uh, sample of the community since we have no control over who comes into these autopsy centers. We do oversample blacks and lower SES whites in Brazil since most people, or actually almost everyone who, um, who goes to a private hospital or even at IAMSB will get a cause of death on their death certificate. Um, so it's not exactly a random sample, but um, it's certainly um, more similar across race, but it is cross-sectional and we don't get the same directionality of associations. So the data are there, you're welcome to use them. Um, you know, just a couple of cautionary notes for how we approach them. And this is similar to a lot of other data sets that are around. So let me stop there. Uh, we're running a bit late. So I presume that the questions will come in the question session uh, before lunch. So Thank yeah, you. there's, hi, yeah, Dr. Bennett, there's one uh, question from the um, web audience uh, okay. asking if emerging data on COVID and its impact on AD risk is uh, being collected or will become available anytime soon? Yeah, so we are working on uh, collecting that data. Uh, we have it on many of our decedents in the US, um, but we have, don't have it completely captured across all of the cohorts. Um, I do believe that that's the topic of the next talk, though. <laughs> Excellent. Thank you very much for a delightful right, and informative session. Uh, so uh, moving, uh, moving on then.